Um, and uh, <coughs> pretty much uh, all the material is on Blackboard. <coughs> but you will see, I um, uh, I, will, I will I will show you how. up there. So into the data mining, <coughs> uh, the reading material, so I will be lecturing from here, this DM week one multiple docs, there will be a DM week two multiple docs, ta -ta -ta, like that. And <coughs> you want to go to, I haven't cleaned up some things, there's a lot of videos, tutorials. Um, <coughs> um, go to where it says jump. Uh, these are the files that I'm going to use. The previous product is was called Excel uh, Miner. Excel Miner. If you see that, uh, you ignore, you ignore it, right? So this is uh, <coughs> the first uh, uh, material that I'm going to use is from this document. Reading comes from chapter one from this book. Uh, partially chapter 10 from this book, you have everything online. You have the PDF files here. <coughs> and, um, and chapter one of the Somali book. Okay. <coughs> um, so this is the reading right here. Um, there's a lot of reading. I can see you are already so let me open this file. Uh, you have the syllabus, which is right here. Um, oh, I mean, and the syllabus is right here. Um, And um, so that's a syllabus. Okay, that's a PDF file. That's the Word file. Um, this is the Smiley book. Uh, this is a jump book, which is um, jump has their documentation online, but I am using the resources uh, from. Uh, <coughs> other books, and if you don't have it online, I will have somebody scan the page or something like that. Um, so you'll see a number of books here. <coughs> you must buy this data mining book. Uh, Dr. Uh, Smalley is somebody that I have communicated with. She is a brilliant uh, person. She is the director of analytics in we have some investor, but uh, anytime I know her, she knows as well. So I know Dr. Smalley. I also know uh, Mia Stevens, uh, who is um, the principal with uh, Jump. Jump, J&B, is a SaaS company. 
So you're learning SAS, which enhances your credibility immensely. If you know SAS, if you know jump, <coughs> uh, you uh, uh, you will look very good uh, anytime you do. That's the whole idea behind <coughs> bringing in uh, uh, jump. It's available for free. <coughs> and uh, you can download it. I'll give you more information. And also, I was working in the summertime with, uh, with Anthony, who is the IT director for the Development Kids School of Business. Um, and we uh, uh, created a dashboard that you can go and click and access software without installing it uh, on the laptop. Okay. But <coughs> uh, there's a lot of things uh, uh, to do. Uh, so, um, the syllabus tells you what uh, we will be doing. We are right here. So reading, chapter one from Reuger, chapter one from this, and lecture notes. Assignment one is assigned today, <coughs> okay? When I say uh, week two, week two <coughs> is next Thursday. Also, our first quiz will be next Thursday. There will be a quiz every Thursday, and um, we will have it either in the beginning or the end of the class find that out. Okay? So everything is right here. So you know where we are. The pace will be <coughs> we'll be doing a lot of stuff, but I hope that uh, you will enjoy. I am not the I, I cannot make things look pretty and so forth. As you will find out very uh, this is the oops. This is the document that I will lecture from. DM, data mining, week one, multiple docs per side, I put multiple docs together. <coughs> and um, uh, <coughs> so this material comes from uh, this book, and we have access to the chapter that I'm covering. All right? This material. Uh, <coughs> uh, data mining. Uh, Data mining is using computer learning techniques or otherwise known as algorithms to analyze data and find patterns. Who uses it? <coughs> you extract knowledge from data and you find patterns. Knowing analytics and data mining is enough to start your own company. In fact, some of you may have may already be doing that. <coughs> because if you uh, are in the, let's take the medical uh, environment, find a pattern as to how a virus behaves, you may find a cure. Hospitals that do not involve analytic and data science experts in the group are uh, behind the times, and the uh, healthcare industry is where the applications of uh, analytics and data mining are the greatest because many times when you speed up an experiment, and instead of, taking, instead of the experiment taking 10 years and you can do it in three days or in two days or in hours, <coughs> that means you have uh, found something uh, that otherwise you would not be able to find in a very long time. Um, the applications are immense. Um, people go to interviews, and not just because of this class, but because of our program. <coughs> um, and they, many times when they say, I'm taking data mining course, the question from the interviewer is, what is that? Can you help us? Talk to people that have taken the data mining class before. <coughs> <clears throat> I'm also the advisor of a business analytics club, uh, and if anybody wants to participate, can be as a member, uh, we can put your, we just, uh, Monday, uh, we had a meeting the, uh, to 
get president, vice president, and so forth. Last year, we had some uh, very nice presentations. And on the 23rd, there will be a presentation by Dr. MathWorks, a very smart uh, lady, on MATLAB, which is a fantastic project. There are many fantastic products. <coughs> so, it's so, uh, so uh, there will be, if you see some easels around, I put them up because there will be posters there in a few days. We're preparing the flyer. Will be a presentation on forecasting, and will be another one on GIS, Geographic Information System. And I asked a very smart lady in the library uh, to do something. And she's working on uh, preparing something. Uh, there's something on SAS that uh, another professor from the, from Boston, Bobe. <coughs> so, um, what is induction, and what is deduction? Um, Induction-based learning. <coughs> induction is a bottom-up approach. So if I have sleeping, sleeping tool is <coughs> So if I have um, and I create this acronym, Yogi. Induction is a bottom-up approach. <clears throat> if you know that within a company you have hourly, salary, and consultants, right? Induction means if you look at these three uh, entities and you find it what, that they're all employees. So you start from three, you start with three, and then you merge them. <clears throat> uh, so that's called induction. And uh, I call it yogi. Young people generalize, thus induce. It's easier to generalize. So in other words, if you have um, an hourly employee, a salary, and a consultant, and you find out that they all have these items in common, right? Then you can <coughs> generalize, and you can call them all employees. So when you start from the separate right, uh, entities, and you merge, you go from bottom up, that's called induction. Deduction is the opposite. <coughs> deduction is, I call it OSD, it's easier, when we are younger, it's easier to generalize. When we get older, right, because to, 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 to deduce, that means if you have employees, and you try to find out the different types of employees, that's more difficult. So that's why I say when you're, and, and you have to have some experience, unless you're Einstein, and you can do both very easily. So deduction is a top-down approach. <coughs> okay, you have employee, and then you try to find out uh, different groups of employees, uh, how the employees differ. You try to find the differences between various groupings, the groupings being hourly employees, salary, and consultant. <coughs> Analytics, data mining, it's uh, not going directly, which I can very easily do, to go directly to software. I worked in the industry over 20 years, and I have violated my own group, and I was teaching at the same time. Because when people were telling, were telling me what they wanted me to do, I was thinking, okay, how can I write a C program to do this? Which means I was wrong to listen. We have two ears in one mouth because it means you have to listen twice as much as we speak. Very important. <coughs> okay. Um, KDD stands for Knowledge Discovery in Database. And this is uh, using, uh, basically, uh, the knowledge that you extract from the data. <coughs> and data mining is a part of this KDD process. And you will see a diagram, this diagram right here. And you will see other diagrams. <coughs> so um, this material comes from the Roger book, which is this slides from that, and this is chapter one of the PDF. 
Okay. <clears throat> I'm scanning pages from books illegally, which means you can report me and I go to jail. <laughs> if that happens, you will have to come and visit me. Or we can do the class of that. <clears throat> um, okay. <clears throat> um, so, so this is the reading material that I'm using. This is the source for this material. Um, <clears throat> so what can, what can computers learn? Computers uh, deal very well with facts, concepts, procedures, and uh, principles is something very difficult when I'm going to touch that. But um, I'm approaching the course. Uh, I have extracted, I prepared my material before I created this course in 2016. I had the material ready. I have gotten in trouble in the real world because I was ahead by two years and my boss, I bought five books on data warehousing and he chastised me. Why did you spend 250 bucks to buy five books? Uh, he goes, so what is the title of the book? I said, I said data warehousing. He said, what the hell is that? A year later, he came to me and he goes, Demetrius, can we do something with that data warehousing? Uh, so, um, what is a fact? This is an Excel file. Excel is a very nice and very limited tool. I love Excel, but it is very limited for reasons that I do not understand. In Microsoft, they keep adding, you know, adding global stuff like that. But Excel can become a, I mean, once you start adding things, then it becomes fantastic. Anyways. What is the fact? If you have an Excel spreadsheet, <coughs> and here's a line. Uh, this is sore throat, fever. So Demetrius had fever and congestion and sore throat, right? So her sore throat, fever, swollen glands, congestion, headache. I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you have a strep throat. So this line here is a fact. It represents something that has occurred. Well, <clears throat> okay, so that's the definition right now. Okay. It says a fact is a simple statement of truth. That sounds kind of very nebulous. So, but I give you an example. <clears throat> what is a concept? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> if I, for each one of you, if I ask you to give me your name, your date of birth, and, <clears throat> um, and um, uh, let's say, let's take this right here. Your annual income, the years that you're in current position, you're working, and if you own a home or not, right? <coughs> so, and you apply for a loan. Um, and there's a column, so you have these four columns in Excel, right? Annual income, years in current position, own home, and then you have good credit risk. Um, I don't like this name. For a variable, I keep it there. It's mentioned, it's used in this book. Because good credit risk doesn't mean you are a good risk. Variable names that are ambiguous are to be avoided. Good credit risk means that you have good credit and you do not have risk. You're not risky. But see, this good credit doesn't mean good credit, no risk, or does it mean good risk and you apply for credit? So stay away from this name that can be, right? You should say <coughs> uh, risk, and the value can be high or low, something like that. So anyways, <coughs> um, these three conditions, A, B, and C, they can be called properties. These are three properties, these are three characteristics that describe you. Uh, <coughs> and then after the word then comes good credit, right? Um, do you have, if good credit risk is true, that means you are low risk. If good credit risk is false, that means you are um, high risk. <coughs> and this is what we call concept or uh, output variable or dependent or response or class. 
<coughs> so in this case, <coughs> you see, you, what you want to do is you want to, to determine if you, you be in the bank. You want to determine if this person who is applying for a loan is, if we should give the person the loan or not. <coughs> okay. If this is false, right here, the output variable, then um, you will be inclined not to give the loan. Of course, there can be other things that come into play. So, <coughs> a concept is a collection of objects. These are the objects, symbols, or events grouped together, right? Uh, so these are, think of these being the objects, object A, B, C, or properties, all right? <coughs> um, a procedure, so that's, we define a concept and a fact. A procedure is a sequence of steps that you need to follow to accomplish a goal. If you want to cross the river, your goal is to cross the river. If you have stones that you step on, right? Step one, you step on one uh, stone. Step two, okay? <clears throat> so, you follow a bunch of steps to achieve the goal. <clears throat> So, for example, if you want to register for a course, right, you need to go fill out the form. You fill out the form online, then you get approval by from your advisor, uh, from your counselor. Uh, you talk to a professor, you talk to other people, and then you register. That's a procedure. This is <coughs> um, complicated. A principle or principles are general truths or laws that are basic to other truths. The principles of religion the principles of honesty, right? So, uh, we're not gonna deal with that. So, for example, the principle of Christianity or Buddhism or the Muslim religion, <coughs> these are based on other principles like honesty, uh, humility, stuff like that. So this gets to be a little bit uh, uh, too much. We will not be dealing with that, but I just wanted to mention. So, <coughs> computers are very good in dealing with facts and concepts. Concepts are the output of uh, when you do a data mining. For the first five to six weeks, we will do a lot of exploration, visualization, analytics. <coughs> um, uh, but um, uh, after the midterm, the midterm will come right after we finish uh, chapter five, Chapter 5 from the Smiley book, we're going to spend uh, two weeks. The concepts are very, very uh, powerful, very important. <coughs> and uh, we are videotaping everything so that, and I want to see if that works out so that you can play this material. By the way, if you have questions, stop. Office hours Monday, Thursday, 9:30 to 11:30. Uh, if those hours uh, will not do, uh, send an email. We'll arrange something else. When the weather is nice like that, you will find me outside. If the weather is nice, my office hours will be right outside from Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Sorry for my noise. Oh. Okay, so you see here, <coughs> when, you, when you log in, uh, when you go online and you buy something from eBay, eBay is called an operational database. It's because it's used uh, concurrently by hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people all around the world. It's called operational because it's live. <coughs> um, a data warehouse, and we'll see a more formal definition of data. A data warehouse is a historical database, is where you have summarized data. You can have a thousand records here, and you can have one summary record here. For example, you may summarize uh, or aggregate um, a thousand records into, uh, let's say there were a thousand uh, people that bought, uh, let's say, a golf, uh, club, golf club set. And you may want to find the total uh, sales for golf clubs for one month, and you'll have one summary at the top. <coughs> um, 
So the data warehouse and the operational database become the source of uh, data for the data mining. And SQL, Structured Query Language, is one way to get this data. How many people know SQL? Very good. I used Oracle for 20 years, <coughs> and I created courses in uh, Oracle database and advanced database for the College of Engineering before becoming a full-time lecturer. <coughs> and as we speak, I, uh, during the summer, we spent a lot of time in, uh, in a group together with Anthony, uh, and uh, uh, I installed uh, Oracle 12C. So if you take uh, the two or three courses where they will uh, use Oracle to do SQL, very, very strongly recommend to learn SQL. Okay. <coughs> Once you put uh, the data into um, the data can be stored in a database, can be stored in a spreadsheet. Then, uh, so you see these two databases, operational and data warehouse, become the source of the data that used to be data. Once you do data mining and you look at the results, you may find out that you need to go back and extract either a bigger sample or better data. That is better data. <coughs> um, when you interview, how many people are interviewing? Is anybody interviewing for jobs? Where are you interviewing? For Commonwealth. For Mass? Yeah. For what? Uh, what's the name of the job? If you can. Uh, risk management. Risk management. Very good. <coughs> um, people will ask you uh, questions like uh, a typical question is: so If you uh, were to start the project, what would be the first one or two or three things that you would do? Number one item understand what they, they're asking you to do. Number two, make sure that the data you have is good data. We will talk about what good data means. So you ask questions like, who collected the data, under which conditions the data was collected? Know thy data, crucial. Because if you use the most expensive and most sophisticated software, data mining or analytics software. If the data is bad, you will produce what's called GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. So <coughs> it's a combination of things, it's a combination of things when you uh, do analytics and data mining. Uh, to use fancy terms is completely useless if you do not pick it up with good data. <clears throat> so you may need to go back and get uh, uh, better data. The data can be missing values. We will be dealing with that hopefully later today. <clears throat> and then once you are satisfied that the results you get are biased, not the results you like, but the results are biased, are, are, are not biased, right? Then you can deploy uh, your will work, meaning you will get people to use it. <coughs> we will talk about a lot, and I will be uh, giving you a lot of terminology. Um, and I very strongly recommend that you do not stay behind. The reason for the weekly quizzes uh, is so that you can do your reading as we go along. <coughs> and um, um, because otherwise, the amount of material that you will be responsible for at the end uh, will be uh, a lot. If you don't, if you're not doing your reading on a weekly basis, it will just be too much. I very highly recommend that you do your reading, all of it. And <coughs> the, uh, for this class alone, I don't want to scare you. You probably need to spend uh, 15 to 20 hours a week. Uh, it will be used to train the 
the computer to build a model. Once you have a model produced by the training data, Think of being a robot. I take the mass bike coming to school and I see a sign that says um, something along the lines of uh, exactly the wording that uh, the biggest competitor in whatever you do the rest of your lives is not human. It's artificial intelligence. What do we do in this class? Is there a way, is, by the way, is there anybody who hasn't taken statistics? Because I would ask you to, uh, to leave the class for your benefit. <coughs> Without statistics, uh, there will be a lot of terms. I made the mistake of allowing one person, and it was a miserable time for him. For your benefit. Statistics is essential. Artificial intelligence, analytics, data mining, can be basic in statistics. Um, <clears throat> so, um, how does a robot, or when you say uh, to Alexa or to Siri, uh, I have uh, three grandchildren, a six-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a four-month baby girl, right? My five-year-old grandson, said last year, Alexa, turn up the temperature by 10 degrees. And my son-in-law is an electrician. He set it up, and the temperature went down. <coughs> um, you are using artificial intelligence anytime you use your cell phone. Um, and so that is where the biggest competition will come from. We are doing artificial intelligence in this class. And analytics, data mining, and by the way, take a lot of courses in analytics, data mining. Big data is just a big data is because you're working with voluminous uh, data. Uh, everything is a large, much larger scale. <coughs> okay. Take courses in R, Python, Java. Take at least Java. Right? And one of R and Python. <coughs> um, and we have these courses here. We have a square data. So anyways, the training data is to train the robot to, to do certain things. Then you want to test the robot. You want to test the robot. The validation data is you evaluate the model produced from the training data. Then you want to reevaluate um, the, the initial model by having test data that's optional. And, <clears throat> and then the real test comes when tomorrow you introduce new data unknown to uh, the robot, to the algorithm, and you find out how well it does. Let me just explain the difference between, <coughs> give an example. <coughs> you live in a neighborhood, and you have some friends, and you hang out together every day. And when you go, to eat pizza, you know what your friend John, your friend John is obsessed with pepperoni. <clears throat> so if you say, if you guys go together and you eat and you say, I predict that John is going to eat a pepperoni, is that a big deal? Because, okay. <clears throat> Think of this as being the same thing. Now you can produce a model. All right. Sometimes John once in a while changes it, and he wants anchovies. So you start to create a model. You say once in a while. Hmm. Is it when it's raining? You create a model in your mind, and you say, Ah, no, it's like pepperoni, but this is the third week. It's approximately when you like the anchovies. You say anchovies, and you may or may not be correct. Now, <clears throat> so think of this being the training data that is used to produce a model. Here, you have friends that live, that you see, so you see these friends daily, and here you see friends that you meet, that you meet uh, 
once a week. And again, you go out eating. But you don't see them that frequently. And here is Maria, right? <clears throat> and part of, part of, your, of your group of friends. Um, and you don't see them that frequently. You develop a sense as to what they like, but it's a little bit harder to predict what they eat because you, you don't see them that often. <clears throat> and you try to use this, what you learn from here, to predict what these people will eat. Then you have friends that you see once every six months. And if you try to use the model you created for these people, it becomes even harder to predict what to believe. Follow what I'm saying? And these are people that you have never seen before. You sit down with them and you try to apply this model to predict what they believe. If the model you created up here for these people works very well, works well, 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 then you have a good model. That is what I'm talking about when I say data, uh, training, validation, test, and new data. When you apply your model to data that your, your, your algorithm has not seen, <coughs> okay, um, then that's the real test. Of course, nothing is 100%. Um, <clears throat> we will be doing this uh, uh, a lot. Um, by the way, you probably even next uh, Tuesday, next week, I will show you this process quickly so that you don't think this is fluff. <clears throat> um, now, we talked about concepts. We have uh, three views. <clears throat> we have the classical, the probabilistic, and the exemplar view. Um, what is a classical view? <clears throat> a classical view is something what I showed you. Um, so if you say you have three conditions, if annual income is greater than 30,000, greater than or equal to 30,000, the year's current position is at least five, and you own a home, then <coughs> you, um, uh, you, you are low risk and you have a good chance to get the loan. <coughs> so when it says classical meaning, it means traditional, right? <coughs> so we have seen that. What is a probabilistic view? This is when you say, uh, <coughs> The mean annual income for an individual who consistently make loan payments on time is thirty thousand dollars. Now, when you say the mean, it's the average. Well, <clears throat> if I ask you for the, let's say you all work somewhere, and I ask you for the average salary, the average salary is let's say forty thousand. Some of you will be below, some of you will be above. It's not fifty-fifty, by the way. Be careful, because I ask. Uh, even mathematicians. The average, I said, what is the average? Well, the average is that number so that uh, half of the numbers are below it and half are above it. Uh, well, <coughs> let me do that to you. Okay. <coughs> if I have these numbers, uh, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. What is the average? You add bigger. So the average is you add them up, you get uh, six, ten, fifteen, and you divide by five, you get three, right? So in this case, the average is right in the middle. <coughs> Let's say I do median. The median is the number right in the middle, right? Assuming the numbers are sorted. Now, let's change one of these numbers. I make it one million. What is the average here? The average is something like uh, 200,000, something like that. numbers are below the average? 
four, fifty percent. But the median is still three. Median is that number so that fifty percent of the numbers are below it and fifty are above. Are we doing analytics? Yes. So, <clears throat> when you say um, the average annual income, you're not that precise. You, it, it's probabilistic. It can be above the average, it can be below, right? So, it's not that, it's not that clear. <clears throat> it's not as clear as this. I mean, when I say annual income greater than or equal to 30,000, it's clear where you go. But here, this is more probabilistic. So <clears throat> data mining deals with situations like that. Or when it says most individuals who have good credit risk have been working for the same company for at least five years. Most. What is most? Is most 51%? Is it 60%? It's subjective, right? So it's not that clear. So that's probabilistic, right? The majority of good credit is, what is the majority? 51%, 52%? Mm. <coughs> it becomes subjective. So <coughs> data mining is very well equipped to deal this and to find a pattern. <coughs> um, there are some devastating diseases. AIDS is one of them. And because it came up in a problem and somebody asked, I want to find out <coughs> how that virus, which is brilliant, how it operates. <coughs> it is very easy to find the pattern. So they look at the virus, the, uh, the, the virus invades the human cell and it goes inside. And then it attacks the parts inside the cell. And some parts of the AIDS virus stay within the cell and some break and they go out. So they look at it, they found the pattern, oh, I found a pattern. The minute they block that pattern or they do whatever they do, the AIDS virus sees that and changes that. Then they block that and it looks at the existence. It's like it's unbelievable, that tiny thing. And it looks at everything that people do and it's like it understands, it sees what they are doing and it changes the, the, the pattern. And this is how people find cures for disease. You can apply that same thinking <coughs> in uh, investing in stocks, bonds, and many other things. There are things that cannot be within formulas, that do not exist in formulas. <coughs> okay? So the exemplar book and the exemplar view <coughs> is similar to the classical. Exemplar means you have examples. So, <coughs> um, this says, so you have these three examples, and it says that if you belong into um, uh, one of these groups, you have a good likelihood to get the loan. So if you have an annual income of 32,000, six years in a job, and you own a home, that means that you have a low risk. <clears throat> same thing with this, same thing with that. But just because, so you may be making $31,000, um, being in a job for 12 years and not on a home, you can be like this. So here you your income is higher, you work for much longer, you do not own a home, well, this count. <coughs> so, if you are <coughs> um, if each one of these is a circle like that. If you are inside, you have a very good chance. But what about if you are here? That doesn't mean you will not. They look at it and they say, well, if everybody here has six years, but you are out here, you do not own because you do not own a home, but you've been working somewhere for 19 years. Well, that counts. It's like these things are weighted, right? <clears throat> you can be inside the circle, and still not get a loan. Why? Because let's say you are, let's say you have this and you own a home, right? You are definitely inside the circle, but you have a public record. 
<coughs> that you need to explain. Um, I knew um, uh, some friends. They had a pizza place, and they had they had all of their money, they had half a million dollars in cash in the bank. They went to buy a house, and they had an incredible difficult time. They had to produce five years worth of pay stubs. At least five. I remember a stack of envelopes like that. So there's other things that come into play. <coughs> now, <coughs> um, if I um, we want to talk about two types of, of learning. One is going to be supervised, and the other one will be called unsupervised. And we will deal, by the way, a lot of the terms that we hear today, you will hear, um, I will be repeating them quite a lot. <coughs> what is supervised learning? Um, <coughs> so, um, I want to give you an example. And the example that I want to give you, I'll go back to the fact where St. Demetrius is up here. You see this right here. sore throat, right? If you have, if the sore throat is something and fever is something, da, 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 like that, then it means you have a sore throat. <clears throat> when the outcome is known ahead of time, we have what's called uh, supervised learning. <clears throat> when you go to the doctor <clears throat> and they check you up, you know, during the, the, the cold season, you know, I mean, you expect to have one of these. Allergies, the throat, uh, cold, right? And you will see how we can detect strep throat by having, by knowing parts. So when you know the, <coughs> when you know the, <coughs> the outcome, then you have a supervised learning. <coughs> okay? And <coughs> when we have supervised learning, it is only when you have a supervised learning that you have training, validation, test, and test data. <coughs> when you have supervised learning. <coughs> okay? Um, the whole idea behind data mining is to create a model and eventually use it to predict new unknown records. Dependent variable. 
this is the outcome variable, right? Outcome. And the outcome is already there. We know that the outcome will be one of these three already called. So when you have the outcome, then you have supervised learning. <coughs> okay. <coughs> now, um, one of the things, we're going to do some uh, uh, data mining manually without any software. <coughs> so, <coughs> from this data right here, from this data right here, right, I want to see uh, if I can see a pattern. I mean, you have 10 records, this is nothing. Um, and, and it's difficult to see a pattern, right? So let's say that we uh, put it, we take this data, we put it through some software, <coughs> and we have this uh, tree right here. So this tree will be generated. There's ways to do it manually, but let's assume we have this. Okay? <coughs> this was generated. What does this say? This says, I will prove to you that this is very easy. So usually this is generated by software. And um, here is the <coughs> so think of this as being a model, right? And uh, what does this say? This, somehow this, this was prepared, we don't care how. This says that when you go to the doctor, if you have swollen glands, then the diagnosis is strep throat. That's why when you go to the doctor, you say, oh, no. they check the glands. If they're swollen, they say, most likely you have strep throat. If the swollen glands is no, then, you, then they check the fever. And, by the way, I ran this by a doctor, so this is really saying yes. <coughs> um, if the fever is no, then the diagnosis is most likely allergy. If the fever is yes, the diagnosis is cold. So then, you get new records. So, <clears throat> these are new people, new patients. <clears throat> and uh, patient ID, 11. What is the diagnosis? Um, you look for swollen glands. It says yes. So the diagnosis is strep. 
Right? So this is strep throat. Second one, <clears throat> you look you you look at swelling lens. It's no, right? So then you look at fever. What is fever here? Yes. What's the diagnosis? Cold, right? <clears throat> the third one has no no, and it's allergy, right? This is data mining. This model was produced and we applied it to new data to predict. Does this mean we are 100%? No. But if we are 80%, 90% correct, <coughs> then we are doing very well. <coughs> this is data mining. Of course, you, you know, you're not going to do this manually, right? Um, this, this is called, um, so you found a pattern from the data, and you applied it to new data completely unknown. These are patients that came next week. <coughs> now, <coughs> this right here, we are going to use this later on in the course but I want to introduce it early on. <coughs> if you have conditions, you see the, in that, uh, in that uh, tree, right here, right? We have what? If swollen glands is yes, then diagnosis is strep throat. That's a business rule. If swollen glands is no, and fever is yes, the diagnosis is cold. That's another business. You see, as you go, this here, this here <coughs> is called the root of a tree. This is a tree. So this is called the root. Right? The root. <coughs> when you have... Um, because there's nothing, it's like a tree. A leaf is at the end. All of these are nodes. This is a leaf node, <coughs> okay? This is a non-leaf node. It's a, this is what, what is a branch, right? So you have, this is another leaf, right? And this is another leaf, right? <coughs> They're all, everything is a node. But you have a leaf node, you have the root node, <coughs> and we can call this a decision node because you make a decision to go left or right. And this is a decision tree. And from here, you come up with these business rules. I mean, when you are in this leaf, how do you get here? Your swelling gland is yes, then you have strep throat. That's the same as writing this way. Okay. <coughs> this part here, will be called the undescendant before the word between if and then and after the word then this is called the consequent. So a business rule it looks like this. If undescendant then consequent. That's a business rule. Alright? <clears throat> and the consequent is what we call output or concept or class. And the undescendant is made up of conditions. Alright? <coughs> An example, <coughs> the quizzes do not have, will not be difficult. The quizzes will tell me if you're doing your reading and if you come to class. So I can have a question like this. Um, if I give you, if 
right here. <coughs> if I give you this, I can say, identify the antecedent, which is this. Identify the consequent. Or give you an example of a business school, giving you this picture, right? If swollen glands is gas, the diagnosis is triple, that's a business school, right? <coughs> um, Unsupervised clustering, let me stop right here with this, and I want to, to do a little bit of uh, jump. That's why I gave you these uh, handouts, and if you did not pick them up, you came in late. I have two handouts here. Did everybody pick it up? Anxiety. People don't are not busy over the weekends. Go into blackboards and start doing some algorithmic things. How do you think Tom Brady became the goat? <laughs> <coughs> Actually, my my dream, because I played I played sports, was to do. I have recommended the school here to do a sports right. analytics program. Then you can work for the Red Sox, the Celtics, if you like that, right? <clears throat> the sports analytics, and you know, um, it, it is great. So let me let me draw the line here, and I want to go. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and do a little bit of jump, okay? And um, jump is a fantastic product. Uh, <clears throat> there are incredible resources. <coughs> and um, um, <coughs> and um, uh, the uh, reputation of business school goes up immensely because Jump is a SaaS uh, uh, product. So let me go here. And <coughs> um, did I send you a document to install Jump? I think I sent you a document, which is also, I think, in the announcements. It should be there. Yeah, right here. All right, I sent this to you. Huh? You don't have it? No. It's a job program. Did you get this email to download and install job? Right, yeah, I got it. Okay. <coughs> um, there's two versions, and by the way, I, I, I stay very close with the Central IT, uh, and <coughs> I'm working with Anthony here so that you can, uh, you don't even have to download, but for now, let's download it, right? <coughs> uh, and I hope that this computer has it. It should jump. There you go. There's two versions, 13 and 14. I'm going to use 13, I'll go back and forth, because the book, when this book was written, it's based on jump 12, actually. Okay. So some instructions uh, here will say, uh, click this, but it's going to click something different. <coughs> so let me put this down here. I, we'll see. I, I'm going to use 13, <coughs> okay? And this is free. I'm in close contact with <coughs> um, with SAS and Jump. Jump is again is a SAS uh, uh, company, and we have incredible resources. So, <coughs> um, um, I have a lot of documents. That's why I didn't want to read anything because um, they are very, very helpful. And I know that I have more than, and people say, why do you have so many things? It's because people ask me, students were asking me. Uh, so. <coughs> so here, <coughs> um, how do we do a bar chart and frequency distribution, right, 
you have this kind of job. So um, all of this, uh, everything that you need is up here. So you, this, you see this uh, document, bar charts and frequency distribution, that's, uh, <clears throat> this is actually online somewhere in a website, uh, in a jump website, and I'll, I'll, we'll get to it. <clears throat> These are called one-page uh, things that tell you to do stuff, okay? So you see here it says, <clears throat> from an open jump data table, select analyze. Well, what table are we going to use? What jump table? It's called uh, the companies table, right? Now, <clears throat> let's, um, if I open jump, just click on jump, right? You can open jump. <coughs> the other thing that we can do is if you download it, you can click on the company's jump table, click on this one, oh, it opened it up. Okay. You have 23 days left. <coughs> okay, the version of jump that they have, it expires uh, uh, soon, but, but you can, uh, they need to re-download the new version. When you're downloading now, you're downloading, uh, it has an expiration of uh, 2020. Okay, <clears throat> so it's fine. So, a <clears throat> couple of things. <clears throat> um, so this is, you, you go inside, inside jump, okay? And, um, very good. You see, you have an immense amount of resources, extremely useful resources. If I click help and click books, this is all, these are all the manuals for free, okay? <clears throat> the data sets that we will be using, they're all, see where says sample data, okay? Where's the sample data? Um, let's open, let, let me open up the sample data and the sample data library. If I go to books and I say uh, discovering jump, this is a PDF file. I will guide you as to what we need because there's a lot, right? But I want you to know that you have the whole documentation. <coughs> um, right. Now, the data sets, they're all, all that, that are referenced by jump documentation. There's jump help too, by the way, when you try to find something. <clears throat> okay. The data sets, if you click help, if you click help and you click sample data library or sample data, let's go to sample data, click sample data, the data appears in many different versions. <clears throat> um, when I say versions, um, open the, see an alphabetical listing of all the sample data files. You click that you get all the data sets that are needed. And you see companies is one of them. Here, you see companies? So you can click it <coughs> and you will open it and jump. I have taken this, so this is where the data sets lie. <coughs> so let's just do what we need for now because there's a lot of stuff. But I want you to know the data sets are there. So this is the you can open, let me close everything in jump. If you installed jump, when I click companies don't jump, it will open jump and then, I'm using by the way, uh, um, Chrome. When you use Blackboard, Blackboard works better with Chrome. Internet Explorer is, is 
slowly being discontinued, and I don't like what they have as uh, follow up. So I'm using Chrome, <coughs> right? So it um, it uh, puts it down here. You click, and then. Uh, click on companies and you install jump it will go directly to jump <clears throat> so this is the table right here and the tables will appear here to the left double click so this is your uh, company state okay let me see if I select everything and I want to make the, 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 the font size I'm not an expert in, um, in jump <coughs> because I just used it for the first time in the spring, but we will be able to work very well. I want to change the font size maybe in front of But you also have it in front of So let's try to do a bar chart. <coughs> okay? I'm going to follow this document. You all have this. From an open jump table, select analyze distribution. <coughs> okay? Always bring your laptops with you. So I click Analyze and Distribution, or I can click this button here, same thing. But let's say Analyze Distribution. And you will go into this uh, window. Then it says, <coughs> click on one or more nominal or ordinal variables. You took statistics. Statistics is going to be used. Nominal, ordinal <coughs> are categorical variables if I ask you what country you come from, and you say Italy, Spain, uh, Germany, France, right? This is textual data, it's categorical data. Is the ranking uh, of importance? No. <coughs> so that's nominal. But if I ask you, are you freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, right? It makes a difference. The ranking makes a difference, right? If you're a senior, it means you're taking, you're taking more courses than a sophomore, a freshman, sophomore, junior. <coughs> so. Uh, the type and size when they have this red, okay, you see it says um, nominal variables have red bars and ordinal have green bars. So here we have these two, right? So, <coughs> and to the right, to the right on your handout, it shows that you took type and size, type and size, and you can drag them and drop them on the white columns you put them here. All right? <coughs> step number, uh, that was step number two. If you have summarized data which we don't have here, click OK. You click OK, <coughs> and you will love jump. Now, <coughs> you see this is, uh, it's showing the bar chart uh, vertical, but you can very easily, <coughs> right below it says tips, to change the display from vertical to horizontal, click on the top red triangle and select stack. Click, this is the top red triangle right here. To the left of the word distribution, you click stack and you get the horizontal. There are many ways, by the way, to do the same thing, like in Microsoft here, you have many different ways to do the same thing. <coughs> you can uh, move, uh, you can make this bigger, move the cursor at the end and drag it and go here at the bottom and drag, oops, go here at the bottom and drag, oh, no, okay. <coughs> um, so it tells you, uh, so I have, um, I have, let, this is the table right here, uh, here is the bar chart. <coughs> Uh, this is the bar chart for type, and this is the bar chart for size. Okay. Uh, <coughs> um, right below to change the display, it says to change future output to horizontal. Now, <coughs> if you always, by default, want the uh, display to be horizontal, that's how we're used to. People show it vertically to save space, to show more than one thing, right? So, <clears throat> if I go, this is one window, this is 
another window, and you'll see how we can organize these windows. If I go back to my main jump window, and I click File, when it says Preferences, right, that was a version 12 jump, but so it's really File, Preferences, right? You can set certain properties up so that they're always implemented in the way that you specify. So you specify preferences, platforms. This is platforms. Uh, distribution. Here is distribution. <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, click stack and horizontal layout. Stack is here. Horizontal layout. Right? So for, it says uniform stack is next, then arrange your rows, quantile, set quantile, and then horizontal output, and then click OK. Oh, okay, that's, you probably don't have that ever. <coughs> okay? <coughs> so, but you can set it up like that. Now, <coughs> um, Let me show you um, a nice thing, right? I mean, but you, you should all have the table and this, right? Bar charts. You see, what we will talk about <coughs> this a lot, on the x-axis, you have categorical data. We have two types of data. This is from statistics. In fact, I'm teaching statistics as well, and I talked about this in the very first lecture. And I told the students that uh, this material will be used again. What I have done, if you go to Blackboard, what I have done on Blackboard, there's a button that says data mining stats review. Click there. If you forgot that, if you forgot that stuff, <coughs> you will go to chapter one. Right here. Chapter on cumulative, and this is where it talks about nominal, ordinal, the different data types. I have that there as well, right? <coughs> um, let's go back to John. Uh, so, when you have categorical data, on uh, when you have a bar chart on the x-axis, you should have. Uh, uh, categorical data, meaning like uh, uh, a column that will not have many values. So the column here is uh, size. Of, uh, uh, remember we put uh, oh, uh, something is wrong with this desktop. <coughs> um, so we put remember um, uh, type and, uh, and and size, <coughs> and we have two different types of computers. Uh, uh, two types of hardware, computers and pharmaceutical, of course. I'm not familiar with the data very much. Or two types of companies. And then here is the size of the company, big, medium, and small. But I want to show you that the job, the job does a very good job is, <coughs> let me open up, you see the table, right? Uh, check this out. This is called dynamic linking. Um, if I uh, click on this button here, on this bar here, it highlights the records of that uh, computer. These are companies which are computer companies, right? If I click on this, it changes. <coughs> no, so not only that, if I click here, you see how the other pictures are uh, affected. This is called dynamic linking. If I am at the table, and you have selected somehow a bunch of records, and you want to select them, you can right click and pick clear row states. So, a jump is, once you get past the beginning terminology, it's, it's, it's excellent. <coughs> okay? You will fall in love with jump. Uh, <coughs> bar charts, another way. Uh, in the same document. So uh, let's close this, right? Here's the table. Another way to do a bar chart <coughs> is to click graph. 
and graph builder. This right here. Right? This is a uh, drag and drop. <coughs> so it says click, then drag and drop, and nominal variable select from select columns. These are the columns, the select columns, right? Anywhere, by the way, you see this red uh, down arrow, red triangle, you can click on it and give you other options. So <coughs> right here, I take, uh, I'm going to take a click on type and drag it and drop it on the X axis. And then click <coughs> uh, a continuous variable. A continuous variable is like profit. A continuous means you have a number that has a decimal part, right? If you take uh, profit, you take profit and you move it on the y-axis, there you go. And if you want to do a bar chart, <coughs> okay, you can click on the bar chart button at the top. This is the bar chart. If you click on it, poof. That's not difficult, right? <coughs> this class is supposed to be a lot of fun. You work a lot, you learn a lot, it will help you a lot, and you need to click, 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 click. I have used hundreds of software packages. I don't care if you give me a software package because I don't know. <coughs> Who is the owner of Virgin Airlines? He says something I truly love. If they ask you to do something that you don't do, say yes and then learn how to do it. That is why he is a billionaire. Not because he's smarter than you. Of course he's brilliant. But the brilliance is in the willingness to take that risk. What do 99.999% of people do when they're told, when we are told, to do something that we don't know? I don't know it, I'm sorry, I can't do it. That is what separates most of these people who are billionaires. Okay, the willingness to tackle something that they don't know. They say yes, they take it, and then they learn how to do it. <coughs> uh, so, I showed you another way to do the bar chart. There's so many things that you can do here. Now, while you are looking at this bar chart, <coughs> okay, let me, by the way, uh, uh, show you something else uh, with, um, with, the, um, with the graph builder. Let me close this. I'm going to go back. Now, you see this graph and then graph builder? You see this icon here? Get used to Once you get familiar, you click, you click this button right there. Set, right? Okay. Now, with the minute you get into a graph builder, you see this dialog? <coughs> This is another way. Instead of dragging and dropping, if you click dialog, right? Um, <clears throat> look, you can make size the uh, x, right? And on the y-axis, what did we put? We put profit right there. Then, <clears throat> where it says options, right? You click here and you pick bar. And then, <coughs> let's actually leave this as smooth, and you'll see what this, what this does. There's a bunch of other things here, right? <coughs> and we will cover those. But click OK, and you see how it has this, <coughs> um, this funny looking line? This line is there because I, I, I don't want that line there, right? So let me close, and let me go to graph uh, builder and uh, put uh, uh, use dialog dialog I put type on my x-axis the type of a company and then profit up here uh, I want a bar chart and you see where it says smoother I will say none and when I do that then 
I don't get that funding with Lang, plus the bar chart is much, much better. Bar, right? <coughs> um, now, <coughs> this bar chart is being used by Wall Street Journal, uh, WSG, Wall Street Journal. Uh, as a business person, if you want to uh, subscribe to it, or I'm sure they have it in the library, uh, on the front page, or the graphs that they use, they're not very complicated graphs. They're histograms, they're bar charts, they're line graphs, thread lines, okay? easy graphs. <coughs> you see, when you have a bar chart, by definition, a bar chart, on the x-axis, it should be categorical. Why? If it's continuous, like salary, right? How many values can you possibly have with salary? Millions. You're going to have millions of these bars. Then it becomes completely useless. So you want to have, on the x-axis, a categorical uh, data type, like uh, type. <coughs> um, so you have a few values. So you have a few bars. On the y-axis, this is profit, right? Let's say, um, now, by the way, I cannot cover everything. It's just too much. We cover a lot. Um, I want you to have the curiosity of a five-year-old. That's the worst thing if you click here and do this one. Right? The worst thing that can happen is your computer will crash, <coughs> which is highly unlikely. Learn to click, 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 and say, what is this? Well, <coughs> the previous, you see this undo? It does, it undoes the previous thing. If you want to start over again, start over again. Jump is a fantastic environment. Is Jump the best tool out there? Because there's a lot of discussion on Tableau, R, Python, da, da, da. In the, <coughs> in the, I've, I've looked at all of these. They're all excellent. <clears throat> um, I love Tableau, I love Jump, I love MATLAB, I love R, I love Python. I looked at Tableau, <clears throat> and the reason that I did not pick Tableau is because to properly learn that package, you need to know SQL very well, to join tables very well, <clears throat> to do database design very well, and if you don't know this, right, I don't want to somebody to tell me to, to prepare many things and then show me Tableau. I want to learn how to build tables from the get-go, which I'm going to show you here, right? Tableau <coughs> uh, is an extremely fantastic product, assuming that the person has knowledge of a bunch of things, such as SQL, database design, entity relation design, one-to-many -one relations, and so forth and so on. Okay? I have an incredible amount of resources on, uh, on Blackboard. One of them is, uh, but let's concentrate on Jump, <coughs> okay, which is an incredible product. Uh, and uh, <coughs> we'll have presentations. There will be other people doing presentations on Tableau. Tableau is available for free as well. Da, da, da. We are using Jump. It is the best tool. It's one of the best tools in the industry, even though it doesn't have the biggest chunk, the chunk in, the, in the industry is by Tableau. You have Tableau, you have, uh, there's another tremendous product called uh, Spotfire by Kipco that does certain things that Tableau doesn't do, that Jump doesn't do. You will not find a piece of software that is best in all aspects. There is no such thing. Every product has its strengths. Right? <clears throat> if you want to pick up a little pebble, are you going to buy a $50 million backhoe? You, all you need is a spoon. Is doing something electronic always the best way? No. Right? I do not like reading books online. Why? <clears throat> not that it's bad, no. Because reading online cannot do this. You cannot have five fingers in five pages and look at the performance. I want to have a complete control over opening five different pages at the same time. But <coughs> that serves its purpose, online reading. You can only see so much. But 
I mean, I'm teaching a lot of courses in calculus as well, da 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 da. And when there are many things that uh, the, uh, the newest uh, types of books, they're called online interactive books, where you click and you, like if you're doing something in, in math and you want to see how the rate changes, you click on something and it shows you a video, right? So <clears throat> there are many ways to do the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> the um, okay. Um, if I say a recall, <laughs> it was better that recalls the last thing you did. Now <clears throat> it's nice to produce these nice um, uh, graphs. If we do not know how to interpret them, we haven't done anything. So this tells you <coughs> that the profit for a computer company is, um, uh, now this profit, this is the mean, the average. See this mean? The average profit of computer companies is, and by the way, you can, you can set it up so that the, 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 the top, see if you move the cursor over, right, uh, right here, it shows you 20 rows, this is the mean is about 240.9. The cursor over there, right? There's 12 rows. <clears throat> so this compares the average profit mean or average for computer companies and pharmaceuticals. So pharmaceuticals make a lot more, right? For the average. If you want, if you change this to say uh, n, this says that you have move the cursor over 20 computer companies and you have. 12 pharmaceutical. <clears throat> if you change this to median, the median profit for computer companies with the cursor over is 70.2, right? So you compare, it allows you, so a bar chart it allows you to compare <coughs> different subsets of data, computer companies versus pharmaceutical companies, right? Uh, <coughs> see where it says label? Let's make this the mean, the average. And let's go to labels and say label by value. So this gives you, uh, this tells you that, so we have average, right? <coughs> right here. The, uh, the average uh, profit by computer companies is 241 million with all the units. Be careful with the units. The average <coughs> uh, profit by pharmaceuticals is 690. If I go to versus label and change the label by value to say label by row, it will have all the rows involved. Of course, if you have millions of rows, this is going to be crazy to put all the numbers there, right? <coughs> and let's test it out. If I click here and go to the table, right? So this tells you, <coughs> this tells you that rows 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which are right here highlighted, are the ones that are computer companies. This is a very useful stuff, right? <coughs> and and uh, so I have, here I have two windows open, I could have a lot more. If you go to Windows, window, and say combine windows, you can create a dashboard. And you can put these two. You click OK. And then here is your dashboard right here. Okay. 